Hey everyone, we're back with our Nissan flashes. Again, I'm using the uh, DI700A for this session. And now we're gonna get the flash off the camera. To do that, we're gonna use the Nissan Air system to make it happen, the Air One controller on my Sony a7R II. Before we do that though, I want to talk about the kind of light shapers that are available to you when you're doing single flash off-camera portraits. I've got a pass-through or shoot-through umbrella right here. It's just a translucent umbrella. And one of the things that's really important that I highly recommend is to use something like this to mount your flash. This is called uh, an S-type flash bracket mount. And rather than the mounts where the hot shoe of the flash mounts into this thing, uh, you take the entire barrel of the flash, the actual entire head of the flash goes into here. Now I greatly prefer this kind of flash mount because it is mounted around the barrel of the flash head rather than on this delicate little foot that's on the bottom of the flash. If someone comes over and knocks off your flash and it's on a standard cold shoe mount where this is stuck on a little metal bracket, the first thing that's gonna break off your flash is this. So these are inexpensive, they are phenomenal to use, and they also give you a lot of flexibility because they have an umbrella mount, as you see here with an umbrella, but we can also use it with our standard studio shapers. If you look at it on the front, right here, this is a standard Bowens S-type mount. So if you have studio lights that use that kind of mount, there you go. You can take any of your studio lights and easily use them for your speed lights as well. Highly recommend this. Don't use cold shoe mounts because I guarantee it, you're gonna break the foot off your flash. So when you're using a shoot through umbrella, Understand that the light's gonna kinda go everywhere. Although it is a very large diffuser, so it is gonna create a very soft, gentle light. This is not something I would typically use in the studio, by the way. This is more an outdoor light shaper. Love these outdoors because they do create that soft light, but since you don't have a background generally outdoors, it doesn't matter. In this case, the background's gonna get light because light's going everywhere. Outdoors, the light just fades away. So these are great for use for fill flash, outdoor portraits. We're gonna head outside and try to see if we can do that as well. Uh, one question that always comes up is the distance of the umbrella to the flash head itself. Should you put it way in here? Should you put it way back here? The answer is, depends, a couple things. If you're shooting or photographing a single person, so these are single person portraits, the further out it is, the softer the transition, the light is gonna fall off from bright to dark because this is back further. If you bring this in closer, you're gonna end up with more of a hot spot that will fall off. It's a personal thing, it's a subjective call. I generally kind of split the difference when I'm shooting a shoot through, something about here, and I'll just tighten this up. Now we're gonna get Kendra back on set and we're going to take a couple of shots with this. All right, I've also got a standard umbrella here. This is just black on the outside. <clears throat> Again, these are white or silver on the inside. Uh, I'm gonna use a white, it's a little less specular for this. Again, generally with flash, silver will put out more light. White is a little more soft. It doesn't create the highlights that a silver umbrella does. So we'll try both. One of the advantages of this over a shoot-through umbrella when you're in the studio or you have a background is you have a little bit more control of the light. Uh, you can feather the light more, we'll talk about that, by not having the light shine right on the background. With a shoot through, the light's gonna go everywhere, it's just what it does, and that's okay. So we're ready to start shooting. I've got my Air One controller on top of my Sony. I got the flash here, doing a shoot through. Let's get Kendra on the set. Hi again. Hi. All right, so I, as I mentioned, a shoot through umbrella just throws light everywhere. Creates a nice soft light, but not my favorite for indoors, but we're gonna go ahead and use it anyway. So let's say like here, and turn, and back that way a little bit, yeah. So in this case, I'm gonna bring the light over here. I've got it on TTL, just straight, so let's see what happens. Yeah, not bad, let's see. It's actually creating a little bit of an odd reflection. I just want to see if that's the cause of what I'm seeing. That was it? Yes, so we got Kendra's mom on the set. <laughs> She's behind it. 
<laughs> so what we found was when we first did the shot with the shoot through umbrella, it was actually casting some light off to the side and putting a light strip on the background. So we've got Kendra's mom, her name is Karen, uh, hiding back there, she's holding up just a, uh, a black reflector for us to stop the light from going. And this actually works pretty well. There we go, right there. Nice. You're going haughty on me, like, hmm. Yes, there we go. Now right at me. And give me serious. You can't do serious that long, I know no. it. That actually works surprising. That actually works surprisingly well. Okay, thanks, mom. Okay. So, shoot through umbrella. Again, one of my favorites for outside. Didn't think it was going to work as well in here. Straight TTL. Didn't do anything. Actually worked really well. Let's swap out and see what we can do with a reflective umbrella instead of a shoot through. We've got a reflective umbrella now. It's right up here. It's actually tall. I've got it up near the ceiling because I want to sort of simulate sunlight. I'm going to kind of simulate how, how you would see. Because what I'm after is I want the catch light in her eye to be about 10 o'clock or so on a clock dial. We're still in TTL. Again, the gray background is helping that a lot because it's close to middle gray. So I'm going to go again with straight. I have it just off axis. It's just off to one side a little bit. Let's see how that works. Yeah, it's not bad. Now this actually is not a bad look, you want to see? Oh, cool. It's actually kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, we're, <clears throat> we're getting a dramatic look here. Um, we could bring in a reflector again, but I actually kind of like it. Yeah, me too. Uh, it might come down a little bit. Let's just bring it down a smidge, just to open up the shadows in your eyes a little bit. If I light from the side of her face that's away from the camera, that's called short lighting. If I put it on the opposite side and have the main light coming into the side of her face facing the camera, that's broad lighting. We've done this together before, so I happen to know that with Kendra, both work, uh, which is unusual. Most people need to be short lit. For her, actually broad lighting works very well for you. So let's try it both ways. This will do it short light first. Again, straight TTL. Here we go. Yeah. Get, actually, since let's go a little bit more serious. Hands on your hips. I like it. Let's get you moving a little bit. Let's get some movement. Nice. Perfect, beautiful right there. Yeah, love it. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so let's just switch it around. I'm just going to bring the umbrella to the other side, which is going to broad light her. All right, so I brought the umbrella down a little bit just to um, open up the shadows around her eyes a little bit more. We're now broad lighting. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful, right at me. Intense Kendra. Beautiful. So we've got really good results with our umbrellas, even better than I expected. So let's bring out the softbox because now I know we're going to have more control over the, where the light goes and we can get a little more dramatic. Cool. Ready? Okay, Ready. softbox.